as Angela Edmondson, who is the CEO of the charity Diversity and Care. We're also joined tonight by Sir Stephen Bubb, who's the head of Acevo that represents chief executives of voluntary organisations. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. Um, Sir yeah. Stephen, let's start with you. Uh, what do you think of this? Are some of you, the executives that you represent bringing the industry into disrepute? Absolutely not. And I think the context point to make is that the average salary for a charity chief executive in Akiva is 58,000. Uh, now that's less than the, uh, than the chair of the charity commission is being paid. If the charity commission think they need to attract talent to that position, then why shouldn't charities? Um, so that's the first point. The second point is the organizations mentioned are huge international organizations, very complex organizations, and they require good people to run them. Um, your point at the beginning about uh, commercial organizations and the salaries, a lot of criticism of, of those salaries. The salaries being paid to these people are significantly lower than those in commerce or in uh, even the public sector. One, one point you mentioned uh, Oxfam, the charity chief executive, she is paid less than half of the salary of the chief executive of Wandsworth Council. Right, but she's paid more than the Prime Minister, isn't no, she? No, absolutely not. She, she actually, uh, I'm talking about Barbara Stocking, who is the last chief executive. She took a pay cut to take that job. And the current chief executive of Oxfam? I think it's paid about 100, 110. And that's not an excessive salary. Well, For an organisation that's one of the you, biggest charities in the world and one right. of the most effective. OK, Angela Edmondson, you are the CEO of a charity. Do you believe that this is something that people have been talking about in your industry for a long time? Would you agree with Stephen Bubb that uh, your peers shouldn't be talked about in this way? It's something that has been um, quite concerning for um, leaders in the charity sector, especially leaders in frontline services. I've been in the charity industry for 30 years, and what we are seeing is um, since the measures of austerity, um, the big charities are the big players at the moment, and there is pretty much a drive uh, to get these high-paying executives on board um, to bring more money into uh, these charities. And at the end of the day, the point raised by the Charity Commission is, are these, um, are these CEOs held accountable? Um, are we getting value for money? And at the end of the day, it is taxpayers' money. And if the average CEO is receiving 50000 or 58000 why is it that the CEO to a charity that's already established, has long-standing connections abroad and internationally, has been doing tremendous work, why is it that they're receiving just under 200,000 a Very year? Very good point, Sir Stephen. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, biblical quotation, a labor is worthy of his hire. If you're running a very big complex organization, the trustees want to attract the best person for the job. Uh, now they need to balance that against, you know, the, the, the financial demands on the charities. These are not high salaries for that level but, but of service. But why does the CEO become the CEO of a charity? It's not to make money, is it? And if it is, absolutely that's the not. wrong idea, uh, isn't absolutely it? Absolutely not. And they don't. Um, but well, the reality... I mean, look, look how much they're running. Uh, look, the no, no. British Red Cross, Sir Nick Young, his yes. pay has gone up 12% since 2010. He earns £184,000 a year. The how Red do you justify that? The Red Cross employs thousands of staff and thousands of volunteers. It's a, one of the biggest charities in the world. But you just it said his motivation have, isn't money. It needs to have good quality people at the top. At £184,000 a year. Let me, the, the Telegraph criticised 14 international charities. Let me tell you, those 14 charities have a turnover £1.73 billion. Now, what donors want is really efficient and productive charities. And they should, we should be judged on our outcomes and our performance. We need to run efficient, effective charities. And if we need the best people at the top, we should get them. Is that it's not necessarily point? the best people at the top. These are the people with connections that bring in money. So at the end of the day, the charities are not concentrating so much on the quality of service and not only being accountable to the public, they're concentrating on how much money these CEOs can bring in. And bear in mind, even though some of these CEOs okay. are receiving half of what they would in the corporate sector, the reality okay. is there is no reason for them to be receiving that amount of Before money. Before we go very quickly, how much would you pay the CEO of uh, Save the Children? The average CEO um, has been being paid 50000 plus. Okay. Would Sir Nick Young take the job for £50,000? What do you think, Sir Stephen? 
Um, he's in the job now. Would, would he the take it? He wouldn't, would he? Go on, be honest. He wouldn't take it for 50,000 pounds. I don't know, pounds. actually. I don't know. And that's I what know the Nick Young is worth. a brilliant chief executive. He probably he deserves wouldn't. the pay he probably he wouldn't, because then at the end of the day, for somebody who's in front line, who's very passionate about what they do, you'd have to basically ask the question, is he in this job for the money? Is it his connections? Or does he have a passion for what he's really doing? We have to leave it there. Thank you very Thank much you. for joining me Thank tonight. you.